Hello everyone and welcome back to 5410 Africa, the channel that helps you travel Africa. This video will be part two on my 2000 Toyota Hilux, aka Frank the Tank, that I've purchased and is building up for my 10 year trip through Africa. So if you're planning to come to Africa and doing something similar, or if you're going to rent a truck when you come to Africa, or you're just an old school Toyota Hilux enthusiast, then this is the video for you. Sit back, relax and enjoy and as always I'm Nick from Namibia and you're watching 54 Then Africa. A few points before we get started or a few things I need to say before we get started is one, I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible. I know no one has 20 or 30 minutes to watch on a video. Two is this is not an overlanding channel nor am I an overlanding expert. If you need that, there's some great channels out there that you can go to. I'll put links in the description below. What I am building and what I'm doing is for myself, for my trip through Africa. It's purpose built for what I want to do. It's for my context. So if you disagree about something or you've done something different, that is fine because that is based on your needs. Three is I'm going to mention a lot of product names. Nothing on this car was given to me or is being borrowed to me. Everything on this car I've paid for with my own money. I've worked very hard for that money and I've spent it. I've based it on research and testing and the things that I've liked, I've kept and I'm now showing to you. Okay, the front. I can tell you now that the last, the previous video was about 60% done. I'm now about 80 to 85% done. The front, you won't see much difference. I still have the boss bumper bumper that I got from, uh, replacement bumper that I got from Johannesburg. Um, the winch will be one of the last things that I add. I'm gonna, I've decided on a 9,000, 9, 9,500 pound synthetic rope winch, synthetic rope just because it's gonna be lighter. And once I fitted the winch, I'll do the suspension. I have already decided that I will be going old man emu, but that will be right at the end. The winch will be the last weight. And based on that, we'll do suspension. Unless, and I just said I'm not being influenced, unless somebody wants to give me a suspension, <laughs> then we can talk. But no, old man emo for now. And at the same time, these lights came with the vehicle, if you remember them from the first video, at the same time, I will be adding the lights. I wanna see how big the winch is and how it sits before I decide on lights. And I'm probably gonna go small square ones. I, I sort of already know what I want. It's between, uh, Light Force and Hella, they've got the small square ones and that is because they don't want to restrict air going into my radiator. This is an old engine, it's an old car, the last thing you want to do is um, deprive it of air inflow that it needs to cool the engine. The rest of the front, what I have on order is my rock sliders, I'll get to that, and my two recovery points. I have replaced my lenses just with normal cheap lenses, the old ones were just faded and bulbs as well just newer brighter those bluish bulbs that made it's made a huge difference finally lights the light bar on top i'm thinking about it at this point i'm still deciding on whether i want to add the light bar because of these lights that's these leds that are fitted in the bumper they i have driven in at night once i avoid driving at night as much as possible but what these lights do is they light up i'm going to show you they light up the area here in front of the car this area very well and that means that you can see all those ditches and potholes etc and that is the main purpose in my opinion of the light bar on top is to give you light straight in front of yourself and then a bit of coverage on the side these lights do a very good job and i might end up not putting on the led the led light bar I will see, see how it goes. The, the issue of adding more lights is it's more money, uh, it's more things that can go wrong. That's, that's why I'm considering not doing it. Okay, next up, let's do the engine. Uh, see if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> I can. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Engine. This is a 2000 2.7 petrol Toyota Hilux double cab fuel cab 4x4 engine is stock standard the oil you see is it just went in for a service recently and they just messed oil over my car it's sad but anyway stock standard i'm not going to change anything they call these engines bulletproof <laughs> 263,000 k's and no problem so far 
I just service it regularly. 10,000 Ks, Toyota Hilux, 10,000 Ks. It gets a service and I take it to the best place that I can afford. That is my secret. I think that's the secret to keeping a Toyota engine, Toyota Hilux engine going forever. Service it with only the best you can afford. And the only other things that you'll see is the snorkel that's fitted on the side. And then I've got one, two, there's the other one. I don't know if you can see it back there. Is the diff breathers, which I've added recently. I did open up the rear diff and of course water contamination. So that's just that's just a precaution for when you need to go into the water. Same, same for the snorkel. Not that I'm planning. I'm not I'm not risky. I'm traveled by myself, one car, one person. So I don't take those risks. I avoid water. I currently work at sea. I know the <laughs> I know the things that happen underwater. You don't want to be going with your car into water unless you're sure, and you can never be sure. So yeah, I'm avoiding not taking those risks, but there will be those cases where I need to go into water. So I have got the protection, my diffs are protected, and I've got the snorkel. And that's it, let's move on. Not much has changed uh, on the side. I still have the, ah, let me not lie to you, 31 by 10 and a half R15 General Grabber X3s, my terrains, I love these tires. I've now driven them long enough to tell you, to confidently tell you that I trust these tires. I've taken them to the northwest of Namibia, one of these, one of the toughest terrains for tires, tire killing area, tire killing area. <laughs> Survived, no problems. I've had zero issues. I love these tires. And it's one thing, one place, one area that you should never, ever go cheap on is tires. If you don't have tires, you can't go anyway. Then the rims. You can see is black steel rims. Those are original Toyota rims. All I did is I took them off, had them refurbished and resprayed, just to check that there's no frailties in the, in the steel and 100% happy. Obviously, some people will say you should be going aluminum. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's a personal choice. I personally, for the bush, I prefer steel. I think uh, steel gives you a lot more leeway. You are, you're able to fix steel in the bush but i don't want to get into an argument ronnie dahl i'll put the link in the description has got an excellent video steel versus aluminium rims and just go and watch that i'll tell you and then i've got the hubcaps no greater feeling in the world than switching than switching the hubcaps on and off getting out the car on you know in four by four i love that feeling i love that feeling just remember if you do have a car with hubcaps Hubcaps, is this called hubcaps? No, with hubs. If you do have a car with hubs, you need to, at least once a month, according to my usual user manual, I've actually read the user manual. <laughs> you are a geek. Once a month, you have to drive at least 13 kilometers in 4x4 to keep the system lubricated. This is what I'm doing now. I'm at Grabo 4x4 track, going into, 4x, uh, going into low range, going to high range, diff lock on, diff lock off. Just to get the system uh, lubricated. Just remember that if you have this type of view. Don't park it for three months at home and then one day want to go four by fouring because they do get stuck and you'll be stuck. Running boards, I still have the same running boards. Just get that into the shot. Still the same running boards. I have ordered the Onka double tube. I'll put a picture in double tube uh, rock sliders. So those should be coming in the next two or three weeks. I think it's going to look good. I think it's going to look good. Uh, still the window tint that I got with the vehicle. This is useful. You might might just be able to see my fridge in there. Keeps the inside very cool. It means I save on uh, using electricity for my fridge. It also means I don't have to use the aircon that much. Means I save fuel. Plus, Africa. People can't see. I've got a lot of stuff in here. I've got a fridge, camera equipment, etc. Wallets, uh, phones, etc., etc. If people can't see in there, they're less likely to want to break in. If, argue you can argue well let's we can debate that but that's my four decades in Africa that's my experience then I've got a cheap cheap awning I gone cheap I've only used it two or three times since I got it that's why I went cheap if it breaks I take it off and I put on a new one awning is not critical if my awning breaks in the bush I'm not gonna be stranded saying that this is a wonderful and I said cheap I shouldn't say cheap I should say budget or affordable option from Awning galore. I'll put the link in the description in Johannesburg. I think that cost me 2,000 Rand, which is nothing and it weighs. This is the reason I got it. Not because it's cheap. Yes, it's cheap. It weighs four kilograms. 
imagine your tire awning where yes it has its limitations but if it's stupid windy i'm not going to be outside anyway four kgs imagine that for weight on your roof four kgs i'll get i'll get to the roof rack later and then i've just recently added this camping light uh, it's just when you camp you got light i only have one i'm not too crazy about lighting up the entire area yes i know it's safer but camping for me is it's done in a specific way what i still need to do for this one is add i want to add a dimmer switch so that i can actually control i'm not sure can you do that for 12 volt so that i can control the brightness the rear end of the vehicle and as you can see immediately aluminium calipi made in namibia by oryx aluminium socket mount pretty happy with the canopy it fits perfect it does its job the reasons are simply more and safer storage i have had with the recent rains in namibia We've had a lot of rain. I've had issues with a bit of water coming in. I put a rubber seal on both sides and that sorted the issue. Okay, on the back then I've got my second spare wheel and my bry grid. <sighs> camping bry. Uh, do I need to tell you? <laughs> second spare wheel, very important, especially when you're alone and you're going in the bush. I've got my rear hitch receiver for when I need to be recovered or I need to recover someone else. Remember when it comes to recovery, the equipment and the capabilities you have is not only for yourself to be recovered. It's also to help others or to be able to recover others. That's very important and crucial to remember when you buy recovery equipment. So let's open this up. This is quite easy to do. And look at that rust. This is the only room I haven't done yet. Shame on me. Let's open up the canopy in the back. Ah. Back and I think just to get a bit more light, open up the sides very easy to open. Hey, hey, customers, open this side. That's the canopy. Okay, let's carry on with the back. Just remove that camera. What you'll see here is my ground tent, tent go tent. Ah. I'll just stack everything here. So no, I don't have a rooftop tent. The argument is it's safer. I don't believe it's safer. The argument is it's easier to put up and down. If I camp two, three, four nights, this is easy. I put it up and I can drive and come as I go. I've seen people with rooftop tents. You have to put it down, go out for the day, come back, put it up. So yeah, cheaper, yes, no, wait. Rooftop tents now weigh up to 60, 70, 80 kgs. That thing weighs 13 kilograms, I think. And it goes in low. It goes in low. I don't want to debate it, it's a personal choice, like I said at the beginning. There's a lot of videos, Ronnie Dahl, Andrew Pearson White will talk about rooftops versus ground tents. It's a personal preference. Going with, that is my roll-up mattress. That's for comfort, the man needs to sleep comfortable at, your, at my age. <laughs> uh, my Max tracks, which used to go on top of the roof, I might I might decide to put them back on the roof onto the canopy there's nothing at the moment but i also use the roof's canopy to launch a drone and sometimes just to chill out you know it's a perfect spot watch sunset for now they're in the back the main reason i don't want to put them on the roof like i said safety in africa and don't don't go offended don't be offended by this because this is based on my experience in africa yes i'm not an overlanding expert but i've been in africa for nearly four decades i've backpacked from cape town to cairo with my backpack People tend to want to take your things. <laughs> not everyone. It's not a general, not everyone. Most people are not. Just like any other country. It's a small minority of people that want to take your things and steal your things. And things that are on the outside of the vehicle is not protected. So those are the types of things that they will go for. It's my stretcher. Like I said, man needs to be comfortable uh, at our age. <laughs> and this is this is my ground cell and usually I'll strap this on top of the roof because it gets dirty and it's wet and stuff so this is only here because I'm not camping at the moment right at the end right in the end you'll see my fishing tackle box if you don't believe me I'll show you <laughs> the biggest change I've made since since the last video is I've managed to organize all of this by putting in a drawer system a drawer system should not by default always be your solution to the back just remember that the drawer system takes a lot of your space and if you put boxes inside of your drawers it takes up even more space do it if you need it do it if you don't need a lot of space but just be aware of that just be aware it's not always the solution 
So what I've done is I've got the front runner. I've not been using a lot of product names, have I? Front runner, the smallest. This is the smallest set you can find and the narrow set because it gives me a lot of space on the sides and left me with some space in the front. And what I've done here is I've just latched on a little gas stove very quick and then I've got my coffee station here. It's not because I'm not camping now. It's not a lot of stuff in here. Coffee station, food. All my, all my food goes in there. We have the fridge as well, but all my food goes in here. And then finally, this one is spices, cutlery, thousands of other things. Okay, on the side, let's start this side. This side, what I've got, and this is going to be a bit dark, I think. I've got, I've added this little box. This is like my daily use items. And these are the items that I don't use that much. This is the most useful thing. Foldable bucket, a little poo shovel, and all that other cleaning stuff. Hose pipe to fill my tank, my water tank. So this is this is sort of the daily use side, cleaning products, etc., etc. And this side, battery box for my battery system. I want to do that right now. Next, and then uh, my toolbox. Here's all my tools, toolbox, my little portable drill slash screwdriver, uh, WD-40 gloves. I have a lot of gloves. One tip I can give you is to get gloves. I have gloves to bry with, barbecue. I have gloves for my recovery, just exclusively for recovery. It's a specific type. And I've got a general purpose one, which I use mostly. Mostly I use it when I pitch, put up my camp or break down my camp. And it's useful one, because it keeps your hands clean. You don't have water to wash your hands. Two, it prevents little scratches and cuts and stuff. Stuff that can infect it, which you don't want when you're in the middle of nowhere. And three, it keeps snakes and scorpions and stuff off your hands because what happened when I broke down my camp is as I was rolling up my tent boom big scorpion popped out I didn't I don't think we had a moment I don't think we touched but that glove just adds that layer of extra layer of protection so gloves probably one of the most important safety items you can have and then we get to my second battery system I'm fortunate because when I bought the car I already had a a second plug, an Anderson plug in the back here. So all I did needed to do was add a box, add a battery, um, connect that up. I've got the solar panel on top, 100 watt solar panel. Yes, we can discuss is it big enough or not. Those are the two lines in. My lines out. I basically put a little fuse box here, which takes a negative and a positive in, and then everything else goes out and everything is fused. And all I've got going out, let's see. All I've got going out is my camp light, the big one, my little LED lights that I have inside the canopy, and my fridge. One goes to my fridge in the front, which is now permanently connected and permanently running. And that's it. That is as simple as it gets. Battery box has, a, unfortunately, a split charger in it. So I cannot do, is it lithium? Lithium, right? I can't do lithium, unfortunately. I wanted to do that because that would have given me double the capacity for half the weight. So if I now need to, if I want to, <laughs> if I want to increase my amp hours, I'm going to have to buy another battery, which means double the weight. What I've missed is my table and chair. You're probably thinking, where's your table and chair? Well, this is, this was done for me by Alutech in um, Vintuk. Yeah, that's my, that's my table and my chair is right in there. I've got the little front runner foldable chair. I love the chair. It's a bit heavy, but look, look, because it's so small, I can just fit it in right there. Let's, let's see if I'll be able to put this back. This will be the ultimate test. If I can put it back with one hand. Ah, ah. Okay, okay, okay. Ah. There you go, back. <laughs> and then finally, finally, here you can see my wiring going through. Second tank, 70 liters. I think my main fuel tank is 70 liters. That's another, so I've doubled my capacity. And we'll talk about weight distribution stuff towards the end of the video. It's getting long, it's getting long. But I think that is everything in the back. No, it's not. Because underneath is, uh, can you see this? My second spare wheel. And of course, cherry on the cake. The thing, the thing that has helped me out twice today my rear diff lock which I engage from the cab and that's that's about it we haven't we haven't done the roof yet okay so the roof 
don't ever don't don't even climb in your vehicle like this unless it's Toyota on the roof roof rack came with the vehicle all I did is I had it refurbished just to check that there's nothing wrong with it and uh, yeah, put it back on shovel I really don't mind if they steal my shovel it's okay it's 150 rand I get a new one so that's why it's on top it's just out of the way there and first recovery method will always be grab the shovel so it's, it's useful and then I've got a hundred watt 100 watt solar panel on top now many of you will say why only 100 watts because it fits perfectly on my roof across like that and if I need to be I can add another one if I need to I don't need more power than that remember what I told you right at the beginning I've built this for what I need I'll be going to Botswana next month for five weeks so this will be the first test to see if I can handle my GoPros my camera equipment my drone and anything else on my phone that I need to charge the only thing I'm going to change I'm going to make brackets so that this goes under my roof rack and then I'll lock it because I know remember what I said anything outside is exposed and might get stolen let's talk about weight distribution quickly quickly because that's something that's important as you can see I've got very little to no weight on top 4 kgs for my awning 2 kgs for my shovel 12 kgs 12 kgs for my solar panel that's 12 to 14 18 kilograms plus 15 that's 33 it's funny how quickly it adds up but that's 33 kgs on my roof and the only other thing that will ever go on top of my roof is my ground cell that doesn't even weigh a kg carrying on with weight distribution I've got my fuel tank my extra fuel tank 70 liters just in front of my rear wheel I've got my fridge 35 say 45 when it's loaded there I've got my 40 liters of water in the middle as well the only other large weight is obviously there's no way of getting around it replacement pump on the front which is being offset by the rear bar work in the back and that ugly rim on that bloody second spare wheel so yeah those two sort of offset each other but sometimes you can see it it sits at the angle that's too heavy but like I said once I've got the winch on I'll sort out the suspension and that's the best that I could build up this to your Hilux to my abilities and in my budget because it's easy you just go, you can just go and park it and just add whatever you want if you've got an unlimited budget most of us don't and that gets me to the reason why I bought a 2000 to your Hilux because people will be going crazy you've got a car that's 21 years old 263,000 kilometers on the clock and you want to add another 10 years to its life meaning when I finish this trip this car will be 31 years old 31 31 years old and probably have close to seven to 800,000 kilometers on the clock Toyota better send me a thank you card when this trip is done you better send me a thank you card because I will finish this Toyota and I will finish with that engine I will the reason is it's it was cheap it was affordable not cheap affordable because it wasn't cheap it was affordable it was in my budget and it met I made a list of criteria that I need for my context for what I want to do the one was it's affordable two do you know how many of these Hiluxes is in Africa all over Africa north south east west there's two cars that you will find anyway Toyota Hilux and Toyota Land Cruiser everywhere in Africa more important is because of that reason you will find the spares spares and you'll find the people that fix them mechanics and that's what you need on a trip like that when I break down I need to be able to call people that come and fix and the nice thing about the older models is you can fix them with plies and wire not really but you get what I say you don't need a fancy technician with a laptop and software wire and pliers <laughs> Toyota's gonna kill me for saying that but yeah that's that's a reality those are the three biggest reasons affordability and the fact that I will be able to fix it and sorry not three the third one is reliability you see that badge on the front of the car did I see that <laughs> I've taken off the name the Hilux name on the side of that car that in Africa means reliability there's a reason you find them all over Africa there's a reason when I travel to the north of Namibia you see these cars everywhere 10 years older 10 years younger up to the 2021 model because Africa uh, if you didn't know better you would think that this to your Hilux is made in Africa that's how many you find here and I'm not exaggerating ask any person and the, again the only other vehicle is the Land Cruiser 
The reason I did not get the Land Cruiser is it's more expensive. It's more expensive to maintain and fix and it's heavy on fuel. This one is currently I'm getting about seven to seven and a half kilometers per liter. The Land Cruiser is very close to half that, meaning my, my fuel bill will be double, <laughs> double for this one if I ended up taking or using the Land Cruiser. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Please, please, if, you are, if you've done this or you are doing it, if you're one of those experienced overlanders and you see something wrong, that I've, something wrong with my setup here, what I've done, please contact me. Please go in the comments. I will not be offended. I, I am still learning and I need to learn, I need to learn fast because I'm taking this car through Africa. Please in the comments or if you just like the vehicle, just comment below say, Nick, that is a, that is a good looking Toyota. Or tell me if you're building one as well. Let's, let's share the experience. But I think that's it. <laughs> I think I can't carry on any longer. And if you're wondering where I am, I am on the Grabo 4x4 route. Uh, it's about 70, 80 k's outside of Cape Town. Very easy, just Google Grabo. I'll put, I'll put a link in the description. It's 150 Rand and you do the 4x4 route. Okay, and that's it for this video from a scenic and beautiful Grabo Mountains in the Western Cape of South Africa. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll put more information in the description. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. And as always, I'm Nick from Namibia and you'll be watching 5410 Africa. Say bye, Frank. At first I didn't think about it At first I thought whatever, yeah At first I thought I'd work around it